Welcome to LT Vegan Living. My name is Gary. Today what we're going to be talking to you is about persimmons. Now we are at the very, very end of the season, right before it starts to freeze here in California. These persimmons are safe, but after the first freeze, you can't have persimmons anymore because if the fruit freezes, you will get sick. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to correctly take these apart and freeze them. And it's a very many reasons why you do not want us to freeze these whole. You want to be able to break them down and you want to just put them away in your freezer bags or you want to can them. That's perfectly fine too. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to take them apart and freeze them. Now, it's very important that you know that there are three seeds, especially on these really giant ones. And though these are in pristine shape, the real issue is that you, if there's, you don't remove the seeds and some of the impurities and damages in the fruit, you will be carrying that into your freezer bags. And then you might be passing on the bacteria that damage fruit all through the entire bag. And if that happens, you might as well just throw it away. So in this video, I'm going to take it all apart, show you why you don't want to just take this entire fruit and stick it in the freezer. It may sound appealing to be able to do that but there are real reasons why you have to break it down. Okay, so let's get started. Welcome to Healthy Vegan Living, a whole food plant-based lifestyle. Now this is what you need. You need a bowl to be able to put the fresh good pulp in. Oh, you will need another container right here to put the skins in because I don't freeze these anymore with the skins. These are so ripe, that's why they're inside this metal pan. You'll need a couple of spoons, maybe one to transfer, one to scrape the, the pulp away from the skin. A way to be able to cut it out, I'm using a steak knife. You need some plastic freezer bag containers with the year I put on 2022. I happen to know one year to the year of the year what my persimmons are. So there's never really that, many, that much of a problem. It starts fairly easy. It, this makes an enormous mess of your kitchen area. So I placed this really thin little cutting thing right on top of a regular board. I have more on this on the right side just to make it easier for me to cut it. I'm going to show you front ways first how you do it and then I'll bring the camera in closer and try to point out the reasons why you should do this. So this one's extremely ripe. We're going to grab this one. You just basically cut it away from the stem, like so. Take the stems and put it in your bowl. Now, if you had a limited amount of persimmon, say like maybe 20, then maybe it might be worth it to get it. I don't worry about this, I use it in my breakfast cereal. Okay, you take your persimmon and you cut it in half again and you look for impurities. This is a clean one, there's no impurities. I do have to look for the seed though. And sometimes it hides in the flesh. Okay, and then you also don't want the skin. There's some right here. So impurities are, show themselves off as a dark mark. So this one has got a little bit of something on it. Don't want that. And you want your skins at first in the wrong place. Okay, and you just go through this and you make sure it's as clean as possible. I'm doing the first couple and after that I'm just gonna run it in the background. Yeah, yeah. So this one, it doesn't have any problems. A little bit of impurities or discoloration, but that's about it. So this flesh goes over here. And what I do to make it easier is I just scrape it this way. Now towards the end, what I do is I use a spatula. It just gives me a chance to be able to get this where I, exactly where I want it. So 
you know, this is very, very liquid. Okay. All right, so that's just, ah, there's another one. So you find little things that you find as, as you see them and you grab them out. This is just a little black speck. You just go through it and you're going, to, and there's, I found another one. This is a piece of a leaf. You just stick it to the other side. All right, that's only one. And I have like over 20 right here and 20 more on the other side. And those will be ready in probably by the end of the week. So then that will be the end of the persimmon season for me. Now this year, I didn't have my friend who had the persimmon tree. Her per persimmon tree went dormant. She didn't have any persimmon trees at all. I bought these on Facebook Marketplace, locally to my area, and I got them for like $3 a pound. So it turned out that each of these, instead of paying four or $5 at the store, I ended up getting them for a dollar. Great deal. And since I'm making a, since I've already made my persimmon pie for Thanksgiving, and I'm practicing on persimmon cookies and persimmon candy, then I'll be able to use the persimmons that I made and I received this year for, for these type of recipes. Okay, so let's get to this. This is just a basic, quick information video to show you some of the pitfalls of freezing your persimmons whole. Now, is this just me? I save the skins for my morning breakfast. And that way, and that's, that's what's gonna go in here. And that way I can have them. Nothing is really lost. And it gives me a chance to double check for the seed. I just think it's funny because if you take a look at different places like on Facebook Marketplace, there are people selling persimmon seeds three for $10. That's what they look like. Right here. But if you buy a persimmon, you're gonna get these seeds for free. I don't even save half of the amount that I, I save these for some, a friend of mine who's gonna try to grow a persimmon tree in his backyard. Okay, so what I do is I just take some of the pulp. I don't, I used to eat and save everything in here. I don't do that anymore. There's just some things you just have to let go. So this is just skins and I get rid of the skins. All right, now watch this one here close. Cut it from the stem. And what's wrong with this one is it's not fully ripe. So this fl flesh, you see, here's a damage right here, right over here where I'm showing you. But this right here is gonna be very, very tart. I don't mind that. I enjoy the tartness in my food. But this, it gives you another reason why you have to take apart your fruit. Because, you know, nature doesn't always put out a perfect fruit. So what I do is I cut that out. I'll put it in a, in a waste pile. And, so, and I, I want to remove the skin too. This one's a little harder because it's not as, uh, as uh, what can I say? That skin's okay. It's not as fresh, it's not as ripe. But I had to use it because it was just, uh, it was gonna be, like this one is a perfectly, it's all the way, for ripe all the way to the bottom. But there are others like this one here, that's not ripe down here. And that's the reason. You still have to use them, even though you may not want to, because they won't ripen anymore and they'll just damage the entire fruit. So you gotta, you gotta choose them. So here I'm peeling off what I can of the edges and the rest goes in my waste container. Over here I'm just going to check the fruit and see if I can find that pit and it looks like the fruit's in good shape. And we already know we have that damage right here so we have to cut that out like that. And we put that in our waste and we just pull the pulp out and you can see Here's another example. No, hard for me to get it when my hands are wet with pulp. 
But here there's two little pieces of, of dirt. They're not the dirt, it's just like damaged, bug damage. So you just pull that out. And it just turns out the pulp sometimes, have uh, the skins have damages on her. It used to be, in my earlier videos, I would process everything. I don't do that anymore. I take the time to get the very best pulp that I can for my cookies and my pies. And soon I'm going to be making a persimmon bread. Okay, now that's all skin. Just a matter of going through it. Of course, you have to have clean hands when you do this. But that's without saying, okay. All right, so we just have to pull off a couple more skins. And then I don't see anywhere on here but the seed. There's a couple black flecks. We're just gonna pick those up. For the most part, it's pretty much taken care of. Okay, so this portion here, this one, I'm gonna take the spatula. And this, some of them do get managed to get away. But I try my very best to not put the skins in. A little bit of skins isn't gonna hurt anything. See, there's a black something damaged right here. It looks like a insect wings. Okay, so let's do another one. Here's another one. Okay. Let's see if we move this over a little bit. Get the knife. Cut it in half, or like this. Take this piece and move to the side. And this one here, we can just kind of peel off the flesh off the stem area. Now the reason I'm doing this video is recently someone just put on put a post on my channel and stated that you can do this whole. And I want the people to understand that you really can't. You have to go, you have to break down your fruit. You have to do this. Okay, and that's all skin. And this way you just cut it in down the middle on like this. And this is another pristine fruit, very little damage. I don't see anything about the pit anywhere. But there is gonna be fruit that looks perfect and you're gonna see damages and you don't want that in your breads and your baking, even if you eat it raw like I do. Okay, so that's basically it right there. So now I'm gonna run this silent and fast. You can see how I do this. And if I see potential problems, I'll point them out to you.
So if this was 30 persimmons, we processed 30 persimmons. It's a lot of work and I need have been about an hour and a half? Uh, two hours. Two hours, it took two hours long. What did we get out of it? Two huge bowls, which I'm gonna show you how to put in freezer bags, just like everything that I do. I put everything in the freezer and that's how I process. This one isn't great. And I have another 20 persimmons. I'll show you at the very end of the video. That need to be processed and will probably be processed this week. No matter how wonderful your persimmons look on the inside, you have to look for that seed and you have to remove it. Also, just because it's a beautiful looking persimmon on the outside doesn't mean that an insect or something came in and remove or damage the fruit. As you saw, I pointed out each of the little pieces that I saw in my fruit. And the fruit that I get from this one person in Placentia, California is excellent, top grade, which is why I went through Facebook Marketplace. Something you might wanna do if you decided that you wanna try out persimmons. Now, the next step is the freezing process. And I've learned, because a lot of recipes ask for two cups of persimmons, I package now in each of these quart size two cups of persimmon pulp, including the juice. And then when I'm ready to do my, my recipes, my persimmon recipes, they're all ready. Okay, so that's the next step. See you in a few minutes. All right, I got so hot I took off my wool shirt. Now it's nice and cool, perfect. Now is the process where you're going to transfer all the pulp and the juices into these bags. And so what I do, I take a two quart, two cup, I can't just go like this, it doesn't work. And as I'm putting it in here, if I see any deformities, any dirt, any leaves, I take that out. It takes a little bit of time. Okay, so I'm first I'm gonna show you a frontal so you get to see, and then I'll bring you a close-up. So you just kind of like, Grab yourself the first scoop. And what I do is I use a, a slotted spoon and I just check it. Because I always find little pieces of dirt or something. This one looks okay. Now you're saying, that's a lot of wastage. Well, it's not wastage. I drain the liquid that is out of here out of this, with this fine screen. You'll see me do that in a minute. And I eat all this in the morning on my breakfast, oat groats, or, or even rolled oats, because I like all three. And I use them all the time. And then, so nothing is wasted in my house. Now the stuff that is wasted is this stuff. This is wasted. And when I had my compost pile, I would stick it in that. Because we're moving, we are in the last few weeks of moving to our new home. Then we just grab some more. Why two cups? Because most of my re vegan recipes ask for two cups of pops. Now this is like two cups and one sixteenth. And then I saw something here at the very bottom, which I'm gonna try to get. 
You don't really want any dots, any dots at all, any dirt. It's real easy at this stage. And you know, even as carefully as you saw me carefully take apart the pulp, a seed can easily still escape here. But you just keep at it. Oh, there it is. So this is a piece of a center. It's got a black spot. We don't need that. So then I take those and I put in that one container. And we'll just put a little bit more on top. All right, so at this point, once I have that, this is a canning funnel. It's got a, a nice handle, which is easier. I put it in like this. Now it'd be better if you had a smaller one. I actually do have a smaller one. But then what happens you in a small, you have a smaller hole. So we're gonna try the bigger one. Okay, so you gotta kinda hold it. You can see it, and then you just fill it in. Put your can in there like that. Get the rest of it out. And then I usually seal it like this. And I take all the air out. And I do this by laying it flat. I'll be showing you this one more time, flat. So you have an idea. And this is my first two cup for my first recipe. All right, so now you're gonna see it up close. It's gonna be speeded up so that you don't have to watch another two hours of me putting this in freezer bags. cheesecloth it's stronger now I'm just trying to get as much liquid as I can it's got a and it's very messy now if you got like a couple hundred of these things I would not waste my time doing this I only had I bought about 150 persimmons I've been eating them, I've been cooking with them. Every day I come up with a new recipe and I put it on my channel. And sometimes I don't. I just enjoy the pure beauty of the fruit. All right, well this is a big mess. All right, wash my hands. Last 2022 bag. I won't be freezing this one because at the end of the week, I'm gonna be needing it. Actually, I'm gonna take that back. I am gonna freeze this one because if you don't freeze it, 
it continues ripening. So out of 30 persimmons, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bags. The first eight bags were exactly two cups and the last bag was about a cup and a half. I have a huge mess. Everything is sticky in the kitchen. So I'll be spending most of the morning cleaning that up. But this is the correct way to do it. Especially if you're gonna be baking with your persimmons. You wanna make sure that there's all the pits are gone, any weird bugs or anything wrong with your fruit is processed out. And that way, you can enjoy clean persimmon pulp and juice for the entire year. Now, I try to use up my persimmons in one year, but I have some from 2019 still. Just happens. Got stuck in the back of the freezer. That doesn't mean that I don't purchase in 2023. Towards the end of 2023, I'll be buying another 100 or 200 persimmons in the new home that we're gonna be living at and coming up with new interesting recipes. All right, so you already know what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be picking up this mess. Try my very best not to leave a huge mess for my wife who's stuck in a wheelchair. Doesn't seem fair. Plus she doesn't eat persimmons as like I do. I eat them raw. I mean, if I could wear them and wear a persimmon suit and Person in bed, I might think about it. Okay, that's a little stimulus. Thanks a lot for watching. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you like what you see, subscribe. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up.